and you're at the time traveler and this is my lifestyle time travel blog and today we are talking about the best oracles of the ancient world So the biggest mystery of life is what to come, what the future holds in the cards for us. And today we may consult uh, astrologers or numerologers, tarot readers, or maybe some oracles, but the people in the ancient world went to oracles regularly. So during antiquity there were official oracles. So we had sanctuaries and then oracles who could predict the future. So you did have to go to some witch or some sorcerer to find out your future. You could go to a temple. So there were different types of divination, how priests and priestesses came to an answer from the God. Because they were only channeling the words of gods. And if you want to know more about the past, subscribe to our channel. First, let's start from the most famous oracle, the oracle at Delphi. This oracle and temple were dedicated to the god Apollo. He was, amongst other things, the god of prophecies. So this temple was erected at the center of the world, at the place where Apollo killed Python, who was guarding the omphalos or the navel of the world, which actually represented the center. So Python was a snake-like creature and he was pretty strong, but Apollo was stronger. So he took over this territory and he erected temple. So probably the first oracle here was during the 1400 years BC, during the Bronze Age. And it was in use until the 4th century AD. But it was actually reformed during the 7th century BC and that is when we got all those elements that we know. So the famous priestess at Delphi was Pythia, the priestess of the god Apollo. And she was the one that was channeling the will of this god. But you can go to Pythia anytime you wanted because she had working hours actually working months. So the oracle was open only from the spring equinox to winter solstice, because that is the time when Apollo was present at the temple and she couldn't channel the word of God when he was not there. And what did he do during winter? He went to Hyperborea to repent for killing Python. And he knew when to leave Delphi. And that was when his favorite constellations Lyra and Cygnus are not visible in the sky. Now let's get back to Pythia and her prophecies. So at first, Pythias were young women, maidens, who come from local reputable families. They didn't have to be the wealthiest families, but you know, those who lived by the book. So that changed because uh, one man fell in love with Pythia and abducted her. And then it was decided that Pythias would be women over 50. So Pythia gave prophecies sitting on a high tripod in Aditon of Apollo's temple. So that is the most sacred part of the temple. And she sat above a crack in the ground which emitted fumes. So those fumes sent her into a frenetic trance and then she had visions from Apollo. Then she gave poetic vague prophecies, which can be interpreted either way. So she was almost never wrong. But she didn't give prophecies every day, she only did that once a month. So at that time people basically ran to get the best position, so that she can admit them. So people went there to ask personal questions, or even representatives of states went there to consult her during wars or before making important decisions. But there is a real explanation why Pythia never gave prophecies during winter. And that is because natural gas flow that went below this sanctuary was diminished during winter. So she didn't have any means to do her job properly. And now we have one of the more spectacular, puzzling, entertaining and fear-infusing oracles. That is Plutonion at Hierapolis, near Pamukkale in Turkey. So Plutonion is a sanctuary dedicated to the god of underworld, which is Pluton in Roman religion, Hades in the Greek mythology. 
and this plutonium was one of the most famous tourist attractions of the old world. It was erected probably during the 2nd century BC next to the temple to Apollo. It is usually located inside the cave and it represents the gate to hell, the entrance to the underworld. This cave was extremely mysterious and people all over the world came there to see that attraction. And there was a business going on at the temple. In order to show how dangerous this cave was, priests sold animals to travelers to test the deadliness of the place. Because fumes and mists went out of the cave, covering the floor in front of this cave. So the best account of this cave we have from Strabo. He described that the opening was relatively small enough, allowing for only one person to go inside, but the cavern was pretty deep. And that any animal that goes inside meets instant death. And they even made spectacle of leading bulls into this cave only minutes after to be dragged dead outside of the cave. Trabo himself threw sparrows into the cave and they immediately died. So he was pretty convinced that the air was deadly. But those deadly fumes didn't seem to affect the Gali, unique priests of Sibylle. So Strabo was puzzled by this and he thought that the priests either held their breath or that because they were eunuchs they had some supernatural powers that were antidote to this poison. And during the descent into a cave priests could have had some prophetic revelations and people gathered there to get their prophecies. Of course, they had to pay a fee, and that is how this sanctuary was prosperous. There's an also another type of prophecy, and that is called incubation. So people performed rituals, they went to sleep next to the opening of the cave, and during the night they would have prophetic dreams so the next morning they would know what to do. And if you want to know more about necromancy and incubation and oracles of the dead, see our video that will be linked over here and also in the description of the video. But what is the actual explanation for this phenomenon? So the cave was above active seismic fracture, which emitted deadly amounts of carbon dioxide. But why were the priests not affected by this poisonous gas and the animals were. Well, that is because carbon dioxide is heavier than air, so it goes down and people can hold their breath. Because animals don't know how to hold their breath and they are shorter than humans, they couldn't escape these deadly fumes. And the mist that Straubo was talking about came probably from water vapors from geothermal fields, as this is connected to Pamukkale. And now we have the favorite Roman oracle, the sanctuary of Fortuna Primigenia in Palestrina, which is ancient Praeneste. It was built at an interesting spot during the 2nd century BC. And it was dedicated to Fortuna Primigenia, the firstborn, and she was the goddess of nature, animal and human reproduction. So the people went there to see what future holds for them. And there is an interesting story how this sanctuary was built. And these accounts are retold by Cicero. So Numerio Sufustio, a wealthy and honest local man, had a reoccurring dream that he had to split a rock at a certain location. And if he didn't do that, something bad would happen. So he was forced to perform this action and from the rock fell wooden tablets with ancient writing, with ancient prophecies. So that was the sign for him to build a sanctuary at that spot. And he didn't do that by himself, he also had help from other wealthy citizens of Praeneste. So they built this monumental, beautiful building that had several terraces, ramps, staircases. They had a temple at the top. And at that temple there was a beautiful sculpture of Fortuna Primigenia. So this was the favorite place of Roman emperors and members of military elite to find out what's going to happen. And it was close to Rome, so that was convenient. And they used a method of divination called sortes, which is drawing lots. 
And these lots were tablets made from wood or other materials that had certain phrases written on them. And they were thrown into a urn filled with water and then selected by chance. But at this temple, young boy went into a well and he retrieved a lot and then a priest interpreted what was written on it giving the prophecy and channeling the word of the goddess. And Cicero says that there was also an olive tree with dripping honey that was cut down to make a box to store these lots. And this temple is still visible today in an altered state. At the top where the temple once was now is a Barberini palace that was erected during the 17th century. And now we are finishing off with the oldest oracle in the Greek world, and that is the Temple of Zeus at Dodona. Herodotus says that it probably existed during the second millennium BC, and even Homer writes about this in Odyssey and Iliad. So the prophecies here were given in an unusual manner. The priests and priestesses went to the sacred grove and they interpreted the rustling of the oak trees that was actually the will of Zeus. And by other interpretations, they didn't actually listen to the leaves, but the bronze objects that were hanging from the branches, like a wind chime. During Odyssey and Iliad, there wasn't actually a building there, and there were no priestesses, but only priests who slept on the ground with unwashed feet. The priestesses appear later, during the 5th century BC. And the person that was the most fascinated by this oracle was the King Pyrrhus, the one with the victory. In 290 BC, he made the Donet the capital of his domain. So he invested in the infrastructure of this city and also in this temple. So he erected new buildings, he rebuilt the Temple of Zeus, he added a festival with athletic games, musical contents and theater performances. And he also built a wall around the oracle, the sacred tree and the Temple of Dione and Heracles. So this sanctuary was burned down, rebuilt time and time again. And it operated until the 4th century AD, when the Odysseus closed all pagan temples and banned all pagan activity like theaters, like games and festivals. And he also cut down the ancient oak tree at the Temple of Zeus. And now one free reading for you. Let's see what Sortes has to say. It says, we don't know what the future holds, but we do know that your life would be better if you like, subscribe, share, send to all. And we'll see you in our next video. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.